Welcome. So what we are looking at is clauses and within the paper of linguistic and stylistic analysis of text that you have in any English. My name is Anusha Ramnathan and we will proceed straight away to what clauses are. Right now, what are clauses? Clauses are basically a chunk of words that have a verb in them and that have a function. So one of the first things in order to understand what are clauses is to refresh your memory into understanding what are words. So what are words is you have noun, you have adjective, adverb, verb, right? Now these are the major categories in which you what you're talking about is this describes who performed an action, what kind of a thing it is, uh, the name of a person, an idea. Okay, so basically it tells us a little bit about name, place, animal, thing, so on to speak. It gives you a name for an idea. This is a descriptor, it describes, and it generally describes the noun. This is an adverb, this is also a descriptor, and it describes itself, it describes the verb, it describes the adjective. Uh, the noun, of course, has something which is a substitute, and that is the pronoun that substitutes it. And then these can be joined by conjunctions and prepositions and so on. Why is that important to remember? It's important to know because clauses are basically, they can act as what are the kinds of clauses is that there is a main clause. A main clause or what you talk about as an independent clause is an idea of a sentence that can exist by itself and it has it is an idea that can exist by itself so when i say i saw a cat then there is one action here that is concrete and it says that i saw a cat and therefore uh, that's it that's a major information and this is a main clause we have studied this in school where we had to kind of understand that this would be an MCL. This is how we will do it in MA. You didn't do this in school in this manner, but that's all that you have to have. You do not need to underline this. This was just to indicate and highlight for you what a uh, main clause is. So a main clause is something that would have a particular action. The main action would come in there and then you would be able to see that uh, it, it, it the sentence makes sense by itself. So uh, can we have two main clauses within a sentence? So can I say something like, I like tea, but I hate coffee. You know, can I have this? There are two there are two main ideas out here, and those two main ideas are that I like tea, and this can stand by a sentence by itself, right? So it could be clauses M capital C capital L small. So you have your I like tea, and you have a but I hate coffee, and this is an MCL by itself. And when I want to join it, this is called a compound sentence. We have studied this in school. You would have an angle bracket to indicate that it is a conjunction that is joining the uh, two main ideas. So you can use an angle bracket for anything that has a join of two sentences. For instance, I could have a sentence which says, I like uh, tea. Um, lemon juice uh, okay and uh, i don't know and 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 buttermilk okay so i could have something where i am saying i like tea lemon juice and buttermilk and i could be uh pushing it out here and i could say and milk 
because there's no space. And if I have it in as a sentence, I can actually write it out as I like tea, lemon juice, and milk. And so all of these are independent phrases that are uh, talking about an idea and they're all joined by this conjunction out here. And so the angle bracket, primarily this bracket indicates that there is a joining of ideas, right? So it indicates that there are more than one idea and that is what the angle bracket indicates. Uh, the round bracket is used for phrases. We are not getting into phrases right now, but that is what the round bracket is used for. And the square bracket is used for clauses. All kinds of clauses. The first one that we have looked at is of course the main clause. And the main clause which is indicated by writing M, C, and L, is also known in some textbooks in your school as the independent clause, a clause that can stand on its own as a sentence. That would be a main clause. Uh, so this is one type. There is another type of clause, right? The other type of clause is known as the subordinate clause. The subordinate clause is written as S, C capital, L small, or it is also in certain textbooks known as the dependent clause, right? It depends on the main clause. That is what the subordinate clause is. You know, the other thing that a subordinate clause does is that it gives additional information uh, the, about the main clause, right? Uh, so it will actually give you some more information that is not necessary, but it is useful to have. Uh, so let's look at certain kinds of what are the different kinds of subordinate clauses, right? So what are the different kinds of subordinate clauses? The first kind of a subordinate clause is that we will look at today is the noun clause. The noun clause basically is a chunk of words that act as a noun, right? Their function is that of a noun. So what it... Uh, I'll give you an example of this. A noun clause is primarily, and it is written in this manner, N, C, capital L, small. The noun clause is primarily something where I would say, what I want is sleep. Right? Now, if you look at this sentence, one of the things that you can say if I wrote it in another way is uh, I want sleep, right? Now, in this case, how many verbs are there? This is the only verb that you have, I want sleep, right? Now, the way that you would analyze it is that there is this wonderful one verb, one action, and that action is the action of wanting, and therefore you would have an MCL out here. So that is the uh, crux of what an main clause is. Uh, but if I'm trying to uh, portray it out here, sorry, that's not gonna get in. Okay, so if I want to portray it out uh, uh, here, this will be my main clause of uh, I want sleep will actually be a main clause. But the way I have written it is what I want is sleep. Now, how many verbs are here? You have one verb, which is what I want. And then you have another verb, which is is. Which one is the verb that actually is going to be, is the main idea? And you will see that it is is 
right? What I want is sleep. So this is telling me, what is it asking? If I ask uh, the question, this is basically telling me what I want, what is sleep or who is sleep or whom is sleep. So in this case, it is answering the question, what is that you want in that sense? And so this is a noun clause. And this entire sentence is a main clause. This is how you will write it. Are you confused a little bit? Can we do a few more sentences to see how this goes? What you will try and understand is that you need to be able to ask the question, what or who or whom to the main verb. And if it is answered, the answer is the noun clause, right? So that's something that you will have to think about and write. Uh, so when you ask this question, what, who, and whom, to the main verb, whatever answer that you get will be the NCL, right? So what is sleep? What I want, okay, is sleep. Uh, so that's a way of asking. That's one question. That's one sentence example only that I have given. I can give you another example. Um, I want... Uh, My mother told me my mother told me that I was right okay if this is a question that you get and this is a sentence now look at how many verbs there are let's look at the verbs there is one verb here which is told and there is a second verb here which is was which is the main idea what is the main idea that you get in these two places the main idea that you get here is the word told that is your main idea, right? This is your main idea. My mother told me. My mother told me what? My mother told me that I was right. So this is my NCL. And this entire sentence is my MCL, right? So what this basically is doing is my mother told me what? That's the question. This entire chunk out here is the answer to that question. Do you get it? My mother told me what? And then the answer is that I was right. And therefore, that is your NCL. Okay, so we will do a few more sentences, but you, this is the basic essence of what a noun clause is. So now let's look at something where you have another kind of clause. The noun clause is one clause. Another kind of clause is uh, the um, okay. The other kind of clause is something that we talk about as the relative clause. The relative clause is something that you would have perhaps done in school as an adjective clause, okay? So the relative clause is uh, 
basically trying to tell you this color um, is basically trying to tell you that uh, what is it describes to you the noun or the pronoun or something of that sort right so you have a relative clause how do you write it uh, it describes r c l r capital c cap c capital and l small and what it does it is it describes uh, a noun or a pronoun that's what it does let me give you an example what does it mean so for instance when you're talking about the boy who is wearing a red shirt is small is naughty right so now if you look at it there is obviously something that is describing the boy but even if you want to try and see what how many verbs are there let's look at how many verbs are there how many action words are there there is is right there is a boy who is and there is another thing there is is wearing and if you notice is wearing is one action though it has two words in it it is actually one action it is a verb it is the act of simple present tense continuous simple present continuous tense right the main action is um, is that's the main one this is the main idea this is a subordinate idea and what does the subordinate idea do what is this chunk what is this chunk the chunk is basically who is wearing a red shirt and that chunk is your relative clause right so uh, and this is the usefulness of me writing out like on a black whiteboard in a sense if you are doing this in your uh, exam obviously there is going to be a problem because you won't be able to erase and suddenly move left and right on the board. Uh, so you must leave a lot of space. And I purposely did it so that you will understand how and why there is, right? So this is an NCL. Uh, sorry, this is a, a RCL. It is an RCL because it tells me more about the boy. This is describing the boy, right? It is telling me more about the boy. So it's telling me more in a sense, which boy? It answers the question, which asked to the noun or the pronoun? That is what it does. So that's what it is answering. Now, how will you do it? The entire sentence is a main clause. And within that sentence, there is an RCL because the relative clause or any dependent clause is going to always come within the main clause, right? So this is one thing that you would have. Let's do one more sentence to just um, kind of uh, get it in our head. Uh, okay, so what you have out here is the boy who's wearing a red shirt is naughty. Um, The shopkeeper told me that the marbles I had asked for were available. Okay. This is the kind of sentences that you generally get in the exam. Now, what is it? How many verbs are there in this? 
there is the shopkeeper told me that the marbles I had asked for and that they were available, right? There are three verbs here. So what is it that what these verbs are? Uh, what did the shopkeeper tell you? So if you notice, we, this is basically your noun clause, right? The shopkeeper told me, told me what? The shopkeeper told me that the marbles I asked for were available. This is entirely answering the question, what did the shopkeeper tell me? And so this entire chunk is a noun clause. But then there is another verb within that noun clause. And that verb is, I had asked for. So what does I had asked for tell me anything about? If you look at this part, I had asked for is basically telling you more about the marbles. Which marbles? The ones that I had asked for, right? So the relative clause is basically telling you more about which marbles. And so this is the relative clause. And the entire chunk is, of course, the main clause. Do you get it? So you have to remember that punctuation marks come outside the clauses, but you have to remember that you basically have to condense and chunk ideas together and ask what are they performing and functioning as. And the noun clause answers the question, what, where, uh, what, who, and whom, right? So that's what the noun clause does. It answers the question, what, who, or whom. This is what it does, right? What, who, or whom. And you ask that to the main verb. And the answer that you get, that chunk, is basically the noun clause. If it has a verb in it, if it has no verb in it, then it is not a noun clause. The relative clause is basically answering the question, which noun or pronoun, right? That's what the relative clause is doing. It is more or less the answer to the question of which noun or pronoun. And that is where you have the shopkeeper told me. The shopkeeper told me what? That the marbles that I had asked for were available. So what is the verb for this? Basically, if I'm trying to do, you will understand this. Uh, sorry. Uh, the verb for the uh, green NCL is were. Right, we mark this in green, and that is what uh, the uh, verb is. The verb for the um, RCL is had asked for, right? It's had asked for. That is the verb for this RCL that we can see out here. And the verb for the, sh the main clause is uh, this told that is the main that is the verb for it right and perhaps use this color mm, no it doesn't look nice so yeah so you can figure out that the there is a verb there is an you know an action for every clause how many clauses are there there are three clauses there is a main clause there is a relative clause there is a noun clause and yes clauses can come within clauses if you're really looking at it the way it is is that there is an mcl in this sentence and that ends out here there is an ncl in this sentence that ends at the end of the sentence also and then there is an a there is an rcl in the sentence and it ends in between somewhere so that's how the structure looks and for every open bracket there must be a closed bracket right so that's what it is when you're talking about um, relative clauses which is the other kind of clause that we have the other kind of clause that we have is the 
adverb clause. The adverb clause basically is what you talk about as A C L, A capital, C capital, L small, right? And uh, what you would have with the ACL is it answers certain questions. And what are those questions that it answers? It answers the question when, it answers the question where, and it answers the question how, and it answers the question why. So these are the four questions that the adverb clause primarily answers. What does that mean? What it answers? It means that, for instance, if I say, I came running. Okay. Uh, so let's do it in another way. I came by train. Okay. Now, is there a verb in it? How many verbs are there in this? Can you tell me? Exactly, there is only one verb in this. There is this verb. And so how many clauses will there be? Is that the main action in the sentence? Yes. So how many verbs will, how many clauses will there be? Just one. This is the main clause. Now, what happens if I tell you that I came <clears throat> because mom called me. Now, what does this do? Why did you come? It, there is a chunk, right? I mean, it very obviously answers the question, why did you come, right? It answers that question, isn't it? And that is primarily what you would talk about as an adverb clause, right? So how many uh, verbs are here? I came, and how, what are those verbs? I, and the other one is, I, you know, mom called me. And if you really focus upon this as an element, you will realize that the main uh, is actually I came. This is the main one. And so this entire sentence is the main clause. And because mom called me and because mom, I'm sorry, not out here, this entire, this is an adverb. It is answering the question, why did I come? Because mom called me. And so this is an ACL right? It is answering the question, why did I come? Answer is this chunk, right? And so I have my ACL. Can we do one more of an ad book? Okay, so this sentence is... Uh, He asked me why I was late. Now, this is something that very often happens and students do make a mistake out here. They will look at the why and say, oh, this must be an adverb. But it is not, it is not an adverb. If you really look at it, the number of verbs there are is he asked me. He asked is one verb, and why I was, was is the other verb, right? You do not have to do this in exam. In exam, you just have to make the brackets and mark it. But I'm just trying to teach you out here. So he asked me why I was late. The entire thing is my MCL. What happens out here is he asked me what, 
and then you have he asked me why i was late and that is what your ncl is so basically the question out here that is being asked is he asked me what you know what did he ask me and he asked me and the answer to that is the ncl right this entire chunk is the answer to that so that is my ncl and you have to remember that just because you see a y does not mean it becomes an adverb clause so this is a noun clause now uh, i want to kind of highlight that aspect and say that yes this is uh, this is a separate idea that we were doing now let's look at the sentence and we will identify another adverb clause right so um ravi went to the party though he was Tired. Right? So Ravi went to the party though he was tired. How many verbs are there in this? Went and was. That's it, right? So this was and this went. That's all that there is in terms of verbs. And if I want to look at it, and I'm not going to highlight it, so I'll tell you how it actually will be in an exam what you have to look at is that the entire sentence is my main clause because it is a main clause ravi went to the party what is it ravi went to the party why ravi went to the party what no it doesn't answer the question what ravi went to the party which party no it doesn't answer the question which party ravi went to the party when it doesn't answer that question it answers the question in a way ravi went to the party how though he was tired why did he go to the party though he was tired he went to the party it is not answering exactly the how and the why it is coming in between like in a sense how did he go to the party even though he was tired he went to the party he was how did he go to the party ravi went to the party as excited as he could be right so there are these answers that you may get sometimes, which actually you will have to be careful. They will not be straight answers. They won't be just something that is, oh, this is so easy. No, that's not how it is going to be. But it basically, if you run through the questions, you will realize, no, it is not answering the question, what? Ravi went to, Ravi went to the party, though he was tired. Ravi went to the party, what? No. Ravi went what? No, Ravi went where? Yes, to the party. But to the party does not really have any verb in it, so it doesn't matter. So Ravi went to the party how? How did Ravi go? Though he was tired, Ravi went. And that is why it is ACL. But you will realize that this is not a clear cut answer. What is more easy then is to actually eliminate what it is not. And what it is not is it is not a noun clause and it is not a relative clause. Are these the only kinds of clauses that you have? No, what is another kind of clause that you have is known as the preposition clause. Now the preposition clause is an interesting clause to have. The preposition clause is basically a noun clause or a relative clause or a adverb clause but it is announced all these clauses when they are announced by a preposition then they become a pcl so it's basically any kind of a noun clause or an rcl or an acl announced by a preposition Right. 
So that is what the uh, clauses is. And it will, uh, you know, that is what the PCL actually does. It is announcing the uh, clauses, right? It announces the clauses. <laughs> And uh, what you can do is you could, uh, what is one of the examples that I can give you? Okay, so this is an example that we can have. We can look at this sentence, the room in which I live is um, is damp okay so the room in which i live is damp or it's cold or whatever but how many verbs are there in this is right and then of course live this is another action word and if you look at live it is um, the live is basically telling me more about which this one is telling me more about which room the room in which i live right which room the room in which i live so should it have been a rcl well yes it is it is giving me more information about which room but it is announced by this very interesting thing that is called a preposition and therefore it will be known as a PCL. And the entire sentence is an MCL. Okay, does this make sense to you? Because it is announced by a preposition, it will be a prepositional clause. And you have to understand when it is a preposition, when it is a adverb, when is it a conjunction, etc. So that is why the parts of speech were very important. Let's look at another sentence for us um the room in which i live is damp you can have another sentence which talks about um Okay. Now, this is an interesting thing. I'm going to be doing this with you. Is uh, the marbles I was playing with were colorful. And if you notice this uh, element out here, what you will find is uh, the fact that I was playing with is, is fine because what you have out here is the marbles. I was playing with were colorful. Which marbles? Which marbles? The ones that I was playing with. So this is an RCL. Why is it an RCL? Because the entire, uh, because here that chunk is just not, uh, is describing which marbles, the specific marbles that I want. And the entire sentence is a main clause, right? That's what the entire sentence is. It is a main clause. Now, let us take the same sentence and write it in a different way. The marbles with which I was playing were colorful. It's almost the same idea, but I have now placed it differently, right? 
Now again, the verbs remain the same, were and was playing. I mean, even here, the was playing, the main action is was playing. So, were and was playing, those are the two main actions. Now, but which marbles? It still asks, asks the question, which marbles? And it is still the ones that I was playing with, right? Which marbles? The ones that I was playing with. But now it is announced by a preposition. And therefore, because it is announced by a preposition, what you have to do is when you mark this part, you would be marking it as an ACL. And the entire sentence is an MCL, right? That's how you would be looking at adverb clauses. Are there any other kinds of clauses? Well, the last kind of clause that there is, is the comparative clause. what we call CCL. And well, yes, the comparative clause is exactly what its name suggests. It compares, but you can't just have anything being compared. It has to have, the comparison must have a verb in it. So when I say I am taller than my brother, then how many verbs are there in this? Just am. That's it. So what is the clause? The clause is basically the entire sentence and there is only a main clause. But what if I take the same sentence and I have another way of writing it? So I am taller than my brother is. Now how many verbs are there? There is I am and there is is, right? There are two verbs in this. And in this case, you will have two clauses because there are two action words. There are two actions being performed. So this entire sentence is a main clause. And then my brother is, is your, uh, sorry, this I should have used another color. Let me use that another color. Um, the other colors are only again for you to know how the clauses are distinguished. Otherwise in the exam, there is no need. This is only for you to know, right? So uh, this entire chunk is my main clause. And this part out here is my uh, CCL. Yeah, that's it. These are the kinds of clauses that you have. This is the types of clauses that you look at. Is this the end of the story? <laughs> no, it is not. There are certain things that we talk about as clee, clan, cling, but we will do that in uh, another video and uh, not in this one. Okay. So for now, what you have to look at is this fact that, um, sorry, you have to look at. Uh, comparative, what all did we do today? We looked at the fact of comparative clauses. We understood what are clauses. Clauses are chunks of words. We tried to see whether uh, these chunks of clauses are types in terms of main clause or subordinate clause. And within subordinate clauses, the types of clauses are NCL, and then there is relative clause, which is other than the noun clause, there is RCL, relative clause. 
and then there is adverb clause and then there is preposition clause and then finally there is comparative clause so these are the kinds of clauses that we have done this is um, an introduction to what clauses are and we will look into the other aspect of a main clause the cle clan cling in another video for now try solving more clauses to see what happens okay all right